Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi with Addicted Fishing. If you guys are new to this channel, be sure to go down here and hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification. Our goal is to educate, entertain, and inspire anglers of all walks of life all over the world to go out and enjoy the great outdoors and fishing of all types. So today we have a little educational piece coming at you, a tutorial on how to fish spoons for salmon, trout, and steelhead. Something we've never done before, but one of our all time favorite styles of fishing. So stay tuned, you guys are gonna see what's coming right now. When it comes to spoon fishing, it's a method that's only really effective in one to three ways of styles of fishing while you're out on the river. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go over rod selection, we're gonna go over our spoons and some of the different ways that we like to rig them, and then we're gonna take you down to the river and show you different kind of water that you wanna find, and actually how you're gonna cast and swing and retrieve these spoons to be effective for salmon, trout, or steelhead, whatever species you're going to target with them. So first and foremost, let's go over a couple rod selections. A good spoon rod is gonna be based more on your length of your rod and the sensitivity. What you want to feel while you're fishing these spoons, and we'll go over it a little more as we hit the river, is you want to be able to feel that flutter and you want to really be able to detect bottom. That's probably the most important part because spoons, more so than any other kind of lure, are very heavy and they fall fast. So having a good sensitive rod, whether it be these Guide Select Pros that I have or any other kind of rod on the market that's at least eight and a half foot and up and has a good sensitivity, what I have here in my hand, this is a 9.2 8-17 Guide Select Pro and this isn't a baitcaster model. We'll go over this a little bit more in a minute, uh, but this is the 9 foot 8-17 and the spin model. A lot of different anglers like to use the, the bay casting models of these rods for fishing spoons because of a couple of the techniques that you use while fishing them. If you're newer to fishing and you're not going to be comfortable using that bay casting reel, you're going to want to go with a spinning model like this. Um, but And I'll go over more of the reasons while we start demonstrating the fishing with the, with the bait caster of why you'd want to use a bait caster sometimes over a spinning reel. So these 8 to 17 pound rods are really a good weight because you have a lot of sensitivity. It's light in the hand, it, it has a lot of sensitivity registered coming through this 30 pound braided that we have on. And I like to go with 30 and nothing much more because I like to be able to get that spoon down and deep into the run without a lot of line drag from the current on a heavier 40 or 50 pound braided line. But braided line is pretty pretty key on this because you want that high sensitivity. What I've done with these rods is, of course, my braided line all the way down. I like to have it with about a 20 pound, 15 to a 20 pound fluorocarbon bumper that I'll tie with a blood knot at the tip of the fluorocarbon and the braided line. You see right here where I have the blood knot tied. I connect those two and you can go back and review some of our other tutorials that we have on tying knots to get that blood knot or a crazy Alberto or some kind of uni knot that's going to connect your braided to your fluorocarbon line down to my spoon and I'll go over the rigging of the spoon here in just a minute. I just use a normal fisherman's knot. But back to the rod setup, this reel here is a, two thousand, or a 3000 series Helios bait casting reel. One of my favorite, very, very smooth, very easy to learn how to cast because it has a great drag system inside for casting those, those heavy spoons. And then what I have on here is a Kaimar 4000 C4, or C40, not 4000, but any kind of 3000 or 4000 series reel is gonna work best um, just for being that you're fishing for salmon and steelhead and you want something that's a little heavier and has some good line pickup for fighting those fish. But again, the 30 pound braid on this one here, C40 on a good eight to 17 pound rod is, is really ideal. So now that we've covered the rod selection, we're gonna go over our spoon selection. And spoon selection really kind of goes in and determines on what kind of water that you're fishing. Really, there's only a certain amount of runs in the river, being one, a real slow stagnant one, or two, a nice fast riffle, or a good sweeping tail out, where you're gonna to wanna to fish these spoons. So I like a little bit heavier spoon. What I have here is a few different sizes, and they come in about three or four different sizes, depending on what company you're coming, you're, you're looking to shop with. Um, these are P-Line spoons, and this is the 2 -fifth model. This is probably one of my favorite sizes. It's just heavy enough to get you down in almost all water currents, but then it's light enough that you're not constantly getting snagged on the bottom very quickly. So they go from different sizes, whether it's quarter ounce all the way up to 2 -fifth, um, and, and back and forth in that, in that range. Some of them are actually gonna be a little bit heavier and it's gonna help you get down in fast water or a high water situation. Um, but jumping from that over to color, color is probably the most important scheme on this other than your size and weight. You can add weight to spoons by using split shot or an inline weight. Um, and we can go over that a little more later. But having a good range of, of sizes is gonna help you a lot depending on what kind of runs you're fishing. And I like to go a little bit heavier in my spoon selection. 
Um, but when it comes down to color, I like to have a range of about three different styles. I like an all silver, I like an all bronze or gold, and I like a two-tone, whether it's silver and gold. But one of my favorites is gonna be the old blue and silver. So having a good range, knowing what your favorite is, having those two different shades of that silver and that bronze are really gonna make you effective in fishing different kinds of water clarity. And we'll go over that once we hit the water. Um, but these two tones, you know, the blue and silver is a very good clear water tone. Um, and then if you're going either dirty or clear, that the bronze and the silver really either way are gonna be effective depending on how you present that spoon. So the other kind of spoon I have sitting here next to me is probably one of the more old school styles of spoons that we see out there, and it's the old Steely. These used to come on sheets in the, in the tackle shop, and they probably even still do. They're a little bit cheaper model of spoon, uh, but have a great way of fishing as well, but they are a lot heavier. So if you're just learning how to fish spoons, you might not want to go straight to the Steely because you're gonna end up losing a lot of them. Um, but it has a different design. It has more of a, a, a fat body, so it actually has a bigger swing to it, a bigger thump. And we'll go over that thumping once we hit the water and show you the technique and the way that you want these spoons fishing through the water column. Um, but the Sealy is a great one to have in your box and it's a great one, it's a little bit cheaper and it's gonna allow you to really learn well how to fish these spoons, especially if it's in nice deep water. One of the most important variations that us addicts make on our spoons every single time we take them out of the package is the hook change. A lot of times these different kind of spoons come with pretty cheap hooks that they, the, the most expensive part of manufacturing a, a lure is the hook itself. So these P-Line ones come with a pretty chintzy hook. You can see I can almost bend that back and forth just by hand. And this hook's connected straight to that split ring. What I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna take that split ring, I'm gonna open it up. You can either use your fingernails or you can use a sp split ring pliers, but my split ring pro pliers are not in my boat. So they're at home and I'm just gonna take that thing right off of there, off that split ring, and I'm gonna have a naked spoon that I'm gonna then make a little bit of a change to. So you got this, make sure to throw that away in the garbage, not on the beach for somebody to step on. But the first thing I'm gonna do when I take that hook off is I'm gonna add a barrel swivel. And you can see I had that barrel swivel right here. Any kind of size works as long as you know it's gonna be heavy enough to be able to fight the fish that you're targeting. And what this is gonna help with is it's gonna help with the action of this spoon. It's not gonna hold that hook in one designated place and allow that spoon to work around that hook. It's gonna have that swiveling action and it's gonna let that spoon have a full range of motion as well as allow that fish to have full rotation on your spoon while you're fighting him. He can spin, he can do his 360s and cartwheels and jump out of the water and he's not gonna come off because that hook will move around with that barrel swivel. So. I'm gonna take this barrel swivel, I'm gonna open that split ring up again with my, my fingernails. Again, not recommended, I'd use a snap ring pliers if I was you. Gonna add that swivel to it, just like that. So this is what we have. We have our snap ring, we have our barrel swivel, and now we're gonna add our hook. So what I have here sitting next to me is a 2 must Mustad Siwash. These are probably one of my favorite types of hook on the market, not only because it's must add, but just to the way that they're designed. Look at the difference in between these two hooks that we have. That This is the one that the lure came with, and this is the two out must add. So you see one, the sheer size and the hook gap, and as well as the bevel in this hook, the way it's, it's beveled out to the side so that when that fish grabs and turns, that thing rolls all the way under and actually digs into that maxillary, and that's gonna keep that fish hooked all the way through your fight. So that's an open eye side wash I have here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put that open eye right through that barrel swivel. I'm gonna take this, your Gerber pliers, and I'm gonna squeeze that thing down tight, and we're ready to fish. So you can see I also have a full barrel swivel and a clasp set up on top of this uh, lure here, and that's gonna stay on there, that's imminent. That's gonna help us fish this correctly. So you guys stay tuned. We're gonna rig this up on the rod. We're gonna take you down to the water, show you a couple different spots, and then we're gonna show you how to fish it. So now that we're down on the river looking for the kind of water that we want to throw a spoon in, we're going to talk about the two styles of fishing a spoon. One is going to be on the swing, and that's what we're going to demonstrate for you first. Two is going to be a cast and retrieve and almost a twitch. There's a couple different methods you can use in some kind of stagnant water. But for the first method that we're going to talk about swinging, the most crucial part of finding a good hole to swing a spoon is something that has a good steady current. Something that's about walking speed, maybe a little bit faster or a little bit slower, and that has a nice straight line and doesn't have a lot of obstruction, doesn't have big boils, it doesn't have big pockets in the hole. It's a nice steady run, more of your typical steelhead run or salmon run, where those fish can come up, 
hold in little pockets and behind boulders and you can use that calculating cast to cast across the river and swing and cover more water with the spoon than with any other presentation possible. That's kind of the beauty of that spoon is that it's a good way to cover a lot of water quick because you're casting and swinging it down. What we're gonna do first, what we have behind us is your typical spoon run. We have a nice steady current, the river comes down through a nice stiff rapid, drops off into a bucket and we have about four to six feet depth all the way across the river with a good walking speed all the way down and through the run. First and foremost, what you're gonna do once you get to that run is you're gonna walk all the way to the top of the hole. That's really how you wanna to start to fish a spoon from top to bottom. That's how you're gonna cover it. And I'm gonna go over your steps and your casting method as we hit the water here. But again, find that steady current, nice and wide, a good place where you can cast short, middle, far, and swing that spoon down, kind of breaking down every little piece of that run so that you can find right where those fish are gonna be. So step into the river with me. I'm gonna show you guys your direction of cast and how you wanna present the spoon. So one thing I preach in all my hardware tutorials is how you go and approach a run. What I always wanna do is I wanna start close, I wanna go to the middle, and then I wanna cast far. The worst thing an angler can do is walk up to the river and cast all the way across. Because what you're doing is you're eliminating all that water in between you and that far cast where there's plenty of potential for there to be fish. What I usually do is I walk up to the run, I look out here, I stop seeing bottom about 10 feet out in front of me. That's a little bit close, that's a little bit extreme for the close cast, but what I'm, my point is, is those fish could be only a rod's length out into this river right now, and I could still be able to catch them. So the key is, is to not start your cast too far. You wanna go to the close cast, go to the middle, and then go far, and then you wanna move your feet down river, or the boat down river, so that you can cover the rest of that run. We're, we're kind of keying in on a very aggressive, very angry bite with these spoons because they give a really hard thump and they put off a lot of vibration so that those fish can't help but chase after them and hit them, and a lot of times bigger fish. So what I'm gonna do with the spoon, it's very imperative that you don't ever really cast it upriver, especially in a fast water situation. Like we have here, we have your, your typical spoon run. So what I always wanna do is that I, if, if 90 degrees is the far opposite bank, I always wanna cast either at 90 degrees with the spoon or at 45. And why that is is so I can set up my drift so that I get a good line management with the current so that my spoon will swing at about the same depth all the way through that run. You don't wanna go from top to bottom or bottom to top, you want it to stay at the same depth and get that nice lope and go all the way through the run. The key is, is as you reel and as you bring tension against your line as that spoon flies through there, you don't wanna to get too much velocity on that spoon to where it's doing a big circle. That's not the right presentation. We want that spoon sitting on its belly, flopping back and forth and throwing off as much vibration as it can as it goes through the run. And you guys can kind of see that as we go right here in front of me. I don't know if you can see it very well, but you see how that spoon has a nice slow lope to it. It's not flying around in a circle. It's not going extreme and it doesn't have too much velocity as it goes. It looks like it's dying basically. So it keys in on those fish's natural feeding habits to where they want to swim up and kill it just because it's dying in front of them. So what I'm gonna do with my first cast, I'm gonna to go to the middle first because the in inside cast here is a little too close. I'm gonna to go to the middle, right at about 90 degrees. It's gonna hit the water, I'm gonna reel it tight and I'm gonna keep my rod tip pointed right at that spoon and immediately feel for that thump. If I don't feel the thump, I wanna reel more and I wanna reel down into my line so that that thump gets created and I can feel that spoon working. What you don't wanna do is cast, dump line and wait to find bottom. What I always preach is as you're fishing any kind of hardware, you wanna cast out at your pursuit angle you wanna fish that lure down to the bottom and then across. You don't wanna cast, let it sink, and then start fishing, because that's how you're gonna lose all of your gear and you're gonna get really frustrated in trying to learn these styles of fishing. So you wanna cast out, anticipate bottom as it falls, and then swing it across the bottom so that you get that proper drift. So I'm gonna do that one more time for you guys. And I want you to watch very closely on where my raw tip is throughout this drift. I'm gonna go right at 90 again. <laughs> I'm gonna go right at 90 again, straight across the river. I'm gonna reel that tight. I'm gonna keep my rod tip pointed right at it with that tip down low. And that's gonna cause that spoon to sink. And immediately I can start to feel that thump. You can watch the end of my rod tip there doing that nice thumping motion. I'm gonna swing that all the way in until we get it nice and close to this rock bank here. And then I'm gonna reel it back in. And you guys can already see that almost zero reeling is taking place as I'm fishing this run. 
I'm letting the water do the work and letting a small belly get created in my line so that that spoon swings across at that same depth. If you're reeling the entire time, you either need to cast at a different angle, more down river, and or change your position in the run because there's too many boils or there's too slack of water to get that spoon to properly work. So now that I've done that middle cast, I'm gonna do a far cast, maybe even angled a little bit more down river at about 260. I'm gonna reel that thing tight. Again, keeping my rod tip pointed right at the spoon the whole time. Nice slow reel until I feel that current catch and I feel I have a good thump. And I'm gonna swing that thing gradually into the bank. And the way you're gonna manage the depth of your spoon is the direction of your rod tip. You see I have my rod pointed straight at it so I have a straight point of contact through my hand and that's for sensitivity. But what I'm really gonna do is, is every time I feel bottom and or maybe a fish bite, I'm gonna lift up. And what that does is every time I lift my tip up in the air, it brings that spoon or that spinner to the surface. Every time I point my tip down, it'll bring that spoon or that spinner down to the bottom. And then whatever direction you're pointing at your rod tip as it's fishing through the zone is where that spoon's gonna go. So you don't wanna have too high of a rod tip and you don't wanna have too low. You wanna go right in your box from about your nose down to your belly button. And that's gonna keep you fishing at the proper depth all the way through the run. And it help you adjust quickly as you go. So now that I made my short middle far cast, I'm gonna take two steps down river and I'm gonna repeat that. So one of the main reasons why you see people use a bait casting reel when fishing these spoons is in, in heavy water, in a, in, a, in a fast water situation, a lot of people, given the weight of their spoon, are, is gonna click the bail and slowly let line out and almost back troll this spoon down the run. With a bait, with a spinning reel, it's gonna be a little bit harder to go about that method. And that's why people could prefer the bait casting reel at times, which you'll learn further and further as you get further and further into fishing these kind of hardware. All right, so now that I've worked my spoon close, middle, far, and from the top all the way to the bottom of this fast riffle, we're gonna go down and show you guys the second kind of water I like to fish spoons in, which is a little bit froggier or slower water, which is gonna create a little bit different technique that we're gonna have to use to get the right presentation. So walk on down with me, we'll show you the next spot. All right, so now what I have behind me is the second kind of run that I would fish a spoon in, which is a lot different than the first one in the speed. What we have here behind us is more of a tail out or more of just a bucket. This could be any type of run if you use your imagination, whether it was a 10 to 15 foot deep hole or whether it's like this one where it's about waist deep to chest high, all the way through the tail out, all the way into the next rapid. What's gonna change in the way that we fish this is the direction of our cast and the action that we put on the spoon at times. So if you're in a big, deep, froggy pool, you can actually twitch and you can move that spoon around to give yourself more action, which is naturally happening in a fast water like you saw just a second ago. So what we're gonna do here to fish this correctly, again, we're gonna go with our close middle far and we're gonna go with our two-step routine to get through the run, but you're gonna be casting at much more of a downriver angle so that you can get the right presentation on that spoon. In order to get your swing, in order to get your action, that lope out of the spoon, you're gonna have to cast downriver so your line and the counteraction of the current catches and you get the right presentation. So let me step in, I'm gonna show you guys here. And I'm gonna be a little more exaggerated on the, the direction of my casting. I'm not gonna go at 90, I'm gonna go almost at a 45 down river. Again, starting a little bit close so that you can cover that water that's inside. I'm gonna cast down river and again, that's mainly so that I don't, don't get too much sink on that two-fifths weight spinner, or excuse me, so that I don't get too much sink on that two-fifths weight spoon. And what's gonna happen if I do cast two up river, it's gonna go immediately into the rocks and I'm gonna be reeling too fast, making that spoon do that full 360 motion that we don't want, that turns the fish off. So we're gonna cast again, a little bit more, a little bit more distance on this next one, but again, more of a down river 45 degree cast, pointing my rod tip right at that spoon, swinging it across, and you can tell here I'm having to reel a little bit more, but you don't wanna reel too much, again, to create that 360 motion out of your spoon. You want that nice slow lope, kick them back and forth about every half second and a nice nice little vibration right on your tip all the way into the bank and then we're gonna call that one good. And on my third cast, I'm gonna bomb it way across there, probably even more to downriver angle so that I could have more water catching my line. Tip pointed right at the spoon, slow reel all the way into the bank. And then I'm gonna take my two steps down and you can tell even by fishing a big wide run like this, I'm gonna be able to get in front of those fish no matter where they're sitting in between those pockets and those boulders because I'm going close, middle, far and then taking my two steps down the river. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys, that's pretty easy. This is the more easy run to fish because it doesn't have as much technicality in that fast moving water. You have a nice stagnant, slow, 
kind of even current all the way across the river, which you're gonna be able to manage well and not be catching on bottom too much. One thing that you can add, a little trick that you'll find over time is you can add motion to your spoon when fishing water like this. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna cast out, and I'm actually gonna give this thing a little bit of a twitch as it comes through. About every half crank, I'm gonna lift that spoon and drop my tip only about two or three feet of a twitch. And what that's doing is it's kind of creating a real sporadic, real aggressive motion on that spoon, which will really kind of key in on a bite, especially if we're talking about a salmon or a steelhead species. They're gonna want to chase that spoon down because again, it looks very vulnerable and it looks like it's dying. So I'm gonna make that motion all the way into the bank and I'm gonna bring that in. And this isn't a technique you're gonna to wanna to use in fast water because you already have too much resistance against that spoon that that little bit of a lift and that little bit of a motion is gonna pull you up out of the strike zone and out of the fish's mouth. So I'm gonna take my two steps. I'm gonna make another cast short. Another cast to the middle. All right, everybody, so to wrap it all up, spoon fishing is incredibly exhilarating and a really, really effective way to go out and catch salmon, trout, and steelhead in any kind of river or any kind of climate or any place you are at in the world. It keys in on a really natural and very aggressive bite, which is, in my opinion, one of the best takes that you can get in the salmon and steelhead world. Those fish swim up and they absolutely crush it. So use all these techniques that we've showed you. Watch this video over a couple times, dial in your colors, and do not forget to leave these spoons in your tackle box every time you go to the river because you will use them and they will be successful for you. If you guys like what you saw today, be sure to go down here and subscribe, hit that little bell notification, and be sure to comment below with what your favorite spoon color is, what your favorite style, what your favorite weight is. Let's hear it from you guys so that all these people out there in the world trying to fish these spoons can get better at it and go out and have more fun just like you. So thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. You stay fishy, stay addicted, and we'll see you out there.